Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. Our goal is to energize your entrepreneurial mindset and create pathways for business success in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. I'm Christy Maxfield, Director of Entrepreneur Development Services at the Center for Emerging Technologies. And hi, I'm Cheryl Watkins Moore, Director of Bioscience and Entrepreneurial Inclusion for BioSTL. Hey, Christy. Good afternoon. <laughs> With each show we record, we're stepping out of our comfort zone. Come yes. join us and think about your business in new ways. We want to take off the constraints of how you view the current and future endeavors in your world. Mm-hmm. You can join and stay in touch with the Entrepreneurially Thinking community on all of your favorite online streaming platforms on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or by visiting our website, entrepreneurallythinking.com, hashtag EthinkSTL. Well, I am so happy. I think we've got a great lineup for this show. Today, we're going to be speaking with Betsy Cohen, who is the Executive Director for Regional Immigration and Innovation Initiative, which is the St. Louis Mosaic Project. The goal of this initiative is that by 2020, our region will have the fastest growth rate of foreign-born individuals. 2020 is not that far away. Uh, absolutely. And I think they've, they've made some wonderful strides because in the St. Louis market, we should be very proud that in 2015, our region was recognized as the fastest growing for foreign-born of the top 20 major metro That's impressive. Areas. So Betsy is making you know great strides with this initiative and also supporting entrepreneurial endeavors for many foreign-born individuals. We're also joined today by Julia Lee, an amazing entrepreneur. A very well, busy woman. Yes, yes, and young. Yes. A young woman. <laughs> a young, busy woman. <laughs> who was born in Shanghai, but who was educated right here in our uh, St. Louis market at Washington University. She's worked in various industries and organizations. I thought this was phenomenal at Nickelodeon. I know. Animation Studios and at the Walt Disney Television Group. Just, just two to name small enterprises. <laughs> Relatively unknown. (laughs) Right. But she decided through all of her travels and through all of her endeavors to head back to St. Louis and manage her family's business, which is JX Restaurants, uh, which includes, I know many of you in the St. Louis market know of uh, the famous Lulu Seafood Restaurant. That's her family's business. Friends who will only... Only do Lulu's. Yes. (laughs) So Julia also is the founder and executive director of Create Space Generator. Uh, It's an artesian entrepreneurship incubator. I love artesian. Yes. It's just (laughs) one day I will be. So it's that whole create space, which I'm really excited to talk to her about that new endeavor, but also her family endeavors and and also, All the work she's doing, because like right. you said, she's a busy young woman. Yes. And then talking to Betsy, too, about what she's doing to help individuals like Julia be successful here in our market. So stay right where you are. Don't go anywhere. This will certainly be a great discussion that you don't want to miss. Now here's Make It Happen with Keith Sales Pro. According to leadership advisor Lee Colin, here's four things every leader should know. Attitude. Life's rewards go to those who let their actions rise above their excuses. Execution. A good plan gets you into the race, but execution propels you into the winner's circle. Growth. High revenue growth forgives many sins. And four, communication. Those who underestimate the intelligence of their employees generally overestimate their own. Today, remember, it can happen. It will happen. And together, we will make it happen. Follow Keith Sales Pro on Facebook or Twitter at Keith Sales Pro. Or visit his website at KeithSalesPro.com. It can happen. It will happen. And together, we will make it happen. Betsy Cohen, St. Louis Mosaic Project. Uh, entrepreneurial thinking to me means creating a path where nothing has been before, envisioning something that we can take each other to and move forward. Betsy, thank you so much for joining us. So glad you're here. Um, we really want to find out a little bit more about the St. Louis Mosaic Project so that our listeners can get a full appreciation for what you're working on. Can you share some of that with us, please? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. There was research in 2012 and 2013 that showed that as a region, we need to be growing, and one way is to grow our foreign-born population. 
And so the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership and the World Trade Center birthed the St. Louis Mosaic Project with a regional steering committee. Wow. And so you took over this brand new initiative. Mm -hmm. What were you doing before you joined St. Louis Mosaic? Um, I was a vice president at Nestle, Nestle Purina. Again, a small little enterprise. Right Right here in our region. Just hit it. (laughs) What inspired you to make that leap from Nestle to working on one of the largest, I would say, most important issues facing our economy, our local economy? Right. What prompted you to make that transition? My first career was involved in marketing and also with many international people, and Mm. I had a passion for our region. Fantastic. You can't beat those. Passion and connections. Right. And right. connections. Play Betsy's a got role. a few. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us also um, just a little bit more about what it means to actually grow the number of foreign born folks who are living, working, uh, growing businesses mm-hmm. in St. Louis? It would seem like that's a really big goal to take on. Right. And, and there must be mer- a number of different strategies that you're using to do that? There are. I mean, for the region, we have um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 125,000 foreign-born people, wow. roughly, okay. out of 2.8 million in our bi-state region. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so part of the thinking of our strategy is we need to engage and grow foreign-born people of all skill levels. Mm-hmm. And that includes international students, corporate hires and transfers, other professionals that are in the area that are looking to... Um, use their skills in our job market, but they may have come from another country, Mm -hmm. as well as those that have less skills. The entrepreneurial part is a very important component because many foreign-born people, when they come to the United States, are prohibited from getting back into the careers they may have had in their home country Mm -hmm. um, because they trained in something that the training would be either too long or they can't get into it here. Mm -hmm. So to provide for their families, they start businesses. Mm -hmm. So they've got advanced degrees. Mm -hmm. Could be medicine, engineering, Mm -hmm. law, etc. But as you said, going that path right now would would really take too long or be too expensive. So in your experience, what kind of businesses are our newest immigrants starting? Well, there are two different kinds of businesses. One is the more high-tech for those that are foreign-born that have degrees or graduate degrees. And they're starting high-tech businesses Mm -hmm. and often connecting through the universities. They're connecting through our high-tech incubators, Mm -hmm. through areas like uh, Cambridge Innovation Center, CET, Mm -hmm. all of these. Then the second group is more about neighborhood businesses. Mm -hmm. And that is creating smaller businesses that hire local people that support neighborhood vitality. And it could be from restaurants. It could be cab companies. It could be insurance, travel, Mm -hmm. trucking, many things that have at the really local broad. level that keep our neighborhoods walkable, keep them lively, and they mm-hmm. keep families and people engaged in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. which also supports the economy, the schools, and people buying the goods of other people. Mm. Right, right. So with this uh, Mosaic Project, what type of resources or support that I'm sure that you provide? Can, can you give us a, an overview? So for the St. Louis Mosaic Project, we have had an immigrant entrepreneur advisory board that has met periodically to talk about the needs of the community. We get maybe one call a week and someone comes in who's looking to start a business. And again, it could be a faculty member. It could be someone that just moved here yesterday. I met with um, a couple from Cameroon that are starting a business here. And they come in and we uh, together walk them through the layout of the ecosystem in St. Louis. And then we make those warm phone calls. So they can immediately go where there may be loan money or business plan money or a a co-working space. Sometimes we call and we'll get a month of free space for them or anything we can do to make them understand that we want to see them succeed as fast and successfully as possible Mm -hmm. and not... Um, bark up the wrong tree. I think that is a phenomenal. It's almost like a buddy system when you walk into well, an, we all need, we talk the about wingman wing all the time. <laughs> it's the wingman that you have, somebody that's opening the doors, that's pointing out the resources, that's, uh, you know, being a resource, a true resource for folks who you know, might not have ever been in St. Louis or, you know, this is their first time in our country, you know. Um, so I think that's a great, uh, great opportunity that Mosaic Project offers for many of our individuals. We also try to give them 
recognition. So we have told the stories of many of our successful immigrant entrepreneurs. We have encouraged their stories to be profiled in our publications mm-hmm. in town. We have talked about um, how we highlight them, such as today. We have done award ceremonies to bring mm-hmm. attention. We also have a program called St. Louis Mosaic Ambassadors, where mm-hmm. we have 700 people. And one of the things we, that are Mosaic wow. Ambassadors that learn and are welcoming, and mm-hmm. one of the jobs they have is to visit three international restaurants um, and meet the owners and be supportive. It's a That's tough right job. Right. We looked That's at so each <laughs> other because food is an underlying theme of the show thing. inadvertently yes. um, because we enjoy it so much. And I, so I think we have the opportunity. We may be able to qualify well, as yeah. ambassadors. You know, food brings people together. Absolutely. And I think if you go to an international restaurant and meet the family that owns it often. Oh, yes. You get to know their story mm-hmm. and then, you know, they know you. And I think, you know, even in today's times, the more that we support businesses and learn about the people and share those common experiences. Spend local. It, it, it builds a bond. It supports local businesses. And, and you learn so much about You travel the world cultures. just yes. by being here. Yes. And I think that that's one of the things that we've seen with many of the cultures and the businesses. Mm-hmm. And that's why the St. Louis Mosaic Project encourages our ambassadors to support them. And also, Mosaic has done some financing for some of our immigrant entrepreneurs to go through entrepreneurship programs such as what Julia has created. That's great. And we are going to revisit that to get an idea of what those entre- how you funded mm-hmm. those entrepreneurs, what they've been doing. But as you mentioned, Julia is with us. You are a superwoman in our <laughs> eyes. <laughs> we are so awestruck by just reading your background and looking at all the wonderful things you've done. And you're not even 30 yet. So <laughs> I'm tired. I, I know. I'm we're tired. Both for her. <laughs> so, Julia, and why don't you walk our listeners through your career path and you know your personal journey? Yes, and how how it brought you back to St. Louis to your family's business and then your newest uh, venture with uh, the Create Space Generator. Sure. So, my name is Julia Lee. I am actually an immigrant. Um, mm-hmm. So, I came here at uh, seven years old from Shanghai, China, mm-hmm. um, right to St. Louis, which is actually pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to Carnegie Mellon first, and then I transferred to Washington University in St. Louis to be closer to my family, especially mm. as um, our family business has tri- started to transform. Mm-hmm. So, uh, my first job out of college was I worked for Nickelodeon and then transferred. Um, so, in the entertainment world, it's called poaching each other. So. <laughs> That's the best way to get talent. Exactly. You might exactly. earn a few people who are less than pleased with you, but the best talent gets poached. Exactly. So I went to work for the Walt Disney Company, mm-hmm. and that was a, an amazing experience because what they really taught me was that dreams do come true mm-hmm. and to believe in everybody, to believe in anybody who has a great the potential. Mm-hmm. So after that, um, so my, you know, my music, my, my passion has always been children mm. and children's entertainment and music. So I went to work for Jam Master J's company in wow. New York. Oh, very cool. Um, so that's Run DMC for, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. For There's our like, youngest listeners right. who may not know. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody in, in Christy and Cheryl's world, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the background. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was an amazing experience mm-hmm. because, because I really I got to work with um, DJs, musicians, mm-hmm. up and coming talent, and and my role was to place them for corporate clients such as Disney, Disney Cruise oh. Lines, Royal Caribbean, Sandals, Atlantis, mm-hmm. all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So looking at the talent of, you know, pretty much otherwise, some were even kids that had no prior experience training them to be DJs and then placing them out in the wow. real world. Wow. Very cool. So, so that, you got to be exposed to a lot of the great talent that's coming up. Please. And like you said, it's almost like, were you able to go out uh, like you're placing these people on different venues where you also constantly traveling. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> constantly sing, living out of a suitcase. <laughs> so you're that platinum level. <laughs> Traveler. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, wow. Um, so really what brought me back was, um, after all that experience overseas and mm-hmm. et cetera, I realized how important my family was to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and during that time, I did develop a it's a it's a benign brain tumor. It's not a big deal at all. Mm-hmm. So that kind of realigned. But still my, a wake, but still a wake up call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I realized that like I'm really close. Like I really want to help my family. Yeah. And I really want to be closer to my community in St. Louis. So that's what brought me back to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And you know, I really thought I was going to come back and have some Zen yoga time. <laughs> <laughs> Which you had earned. Uh, right. And that Betsy's happened. shaking her head. Nope, 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 nope. 
<laughs> so, you know, I, that did not happen. Right. Well, kind of. I still do yoga, but it wasn't <laughs> God bless you. a Zen time. So I got back, and um, one, of the major, one of the first things I did, and everybody that knows me knows this about me, um, my main goal is to retire my mother. Oh, so anybody that's a great that, goal. <laughs> knows well, my mom. she let you is the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not so sure, folks. She's, but, but she's working on it. Right. Because your mother is the one that founded Lulu Seafood, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So we've been in the food and beverage industry for 21 years. Mm. Lulu's has been around for just about 16 years. Mm-hmm. And my mom is there every single day. Wow. I know I've met your mother. She's amazing. She is amazing. She's such a hard worker, yes. friendly to everyone, even yeah. those who sh- she can't see it. She can't see it when others are, you know, talking down to her, et cetera. Mm. So she's just friendly to everyone, mm-hmm. which I appreciate. And mm-hmm. sometimes I'm really like, you know, you know, I have a lot of heart for my mom. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. you want to defend her? Yeah. Absolutely. I get that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's your mom. Exactly. Absolutely. But she built this business and your, your family, uh, and like you said, have all come together to create other businesses too as well exactly so essentially um when i came back um one of the main reasons is so my parents um started to have a a partnership with Deerbergs. Mm -hmm. so we are now in um Deerberg's in Brentwood and B- Deerberg's in Creve Corps. We have satellite locations in there, physical satellite locations. Oh, They're fast wow. casual locations. We started distributing to all, I believe, uh, 19 locations. Mm-hmm. In- so really scaling in a whole new way, even yes. after 16 years. Yes. yes, exactly. And I think this is a lesson that many of our entrepreneurs, especially those in the foods industry, we have a lot of Main Street mm-hmm. businesses and listeners that are in this particular industry and telling your story about how, because we always talk about the scale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting that you guys chose to partner with Deerbergs and it's increasing the growth opportunities. Oh, absolutely. After that happened, then we really saw, well, I basically told my family, one, they actually didn't want to even do it. Ah. They, they didn't want to do it. They And I, I get it. Cause so it, were you the, the driver of this uh, growth opportunity? So partially it was my dad and I, because mm-hmm. um, yeah. my mother actually was just like, you know, I don't want to take off more than I can chew. This, right. is, this is this is scary for She's us. already giving 110% right. where she is. Mm-hmm. I get that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So part of it was to have her see that it would actually simplify our lives. Mm-hmm. To take this, um, more to take revenue. This. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that happened, and then then we kind of went on our track to open up our in- independent fast, what we call fast casual or quick service restaurants. Mm-hmm. Olivet um, will open, let's see, probably in about six days. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> it's a soft open, and then mm-hmm. we'll have a grand open, and we'll ha- invite everybody to have some free food awesome. and free, dr- free beer. Where in Olivet? Where in Olivet are you opening? So we bought out Meihua. It was um, it's it's next to Party City. Oh yeah, I know exactly where, where that is. Exactly where that is. <laughs> <laughs> Did a big renovation over there, yeah. so we're due to open there very shortly. Six days. Well, by the t- by the time, by time this the airs, airs it'll, it'll be, be go. Yeah, <laughs> go everybody. Right. And then, um, um, China Inn and Rock Hill, we mm-hmm. took over that as well. Mm-hmm. So Rock Hill will open up in about a month from now. Wonderful. So, so now are you leading these expansions or is this this is truly a family affair? You mentioned your dad. Who's the strategist behind all of this? Strategist, I would say a strategy is, is more me, but you know, operations, logistics, it's really the whole the whole family. Um, but as for like what works, what doesn't work, mm-hmm. looking at like our profit models, mm-hmm. looking at the best t- quality food, creating partnerships rather than just spinning our wheels on our own. Right. Mm-hmm. That's um, kind of you know where I come in. Mm-hmm. And I also see this as when we hit six locations in St. Louis, then we will move to our next region. Oh, so wow. not physically move, but like, you know, you're going to expand. Ten. Yeah. Expand. Yep. Exactly. That's very exciting. And I know that you're also working on and have created the Create Space Mm -hmm. um, generator. And we want to just take a brief break, come back and talk about how you and Betsy have gotten connected, what that Mm -hmm. looks like, what you're doing in Create Space, and continue our conversation. Holidays can be happy, but we may still be dealing with some stress. Well, this may be a jolly time. You may still be dealing with your rough times. 
So be mindful this season when stress is getting to be too much. Know that you have some support to manage stress and overcome the difficult things that may have happened or are happening to you. Take five through the holidays to find out how to respond to stress. You deserve to be alive and well. Find more ways to take five. Go to aliveandwellstl.com. Julia Lee, I live in University City, Missouri. Thinking entrepreneurially means to me thinking outside of the box, being innovative, looking for solutions that are off the beaten road. So we're talking with Julia and with Betsy, and uh, we've asked Julia to tell us a little bit about how she and Betsy got connected Mm -hmm. and the other ventures going on in her world. Mm -hmm. So, Julia, how did you find Betsy? Well, Betsy and the Mosaic Project, I I really think this is the organization that is finally giving a spotlight to immigrant entrepreneurs. Yes, most definitely. And before this organization, I would say we kind of just did our work and, Mm -hmm. you know, I I would say immigrant entrepreneurs are extremely humble. They don't want the Mm -hmm. spotlight Mm -hmm. for one reason or another. It's just not part of our culture. And it's the first time where I've seen immigrant entrepreneurs really be recognized Mm -hmm. and appreciated. Mm -hmm. And even though it may not seem like it's, you know, it's appreciated or effective on the surface because they're so like so shy, Mm -hmm. it makes a world of a difference. And the impact that immigrant entrepreneurs offer in our communities is phenomenal. And, And You're right. It doesn't get recognized. And I think the Mosaic Project does a really wonderful job of elevating the impact that's occurring in our community. Absolutely. And you know what? It's it's actually straight in the numbers as well. So, for ex- instance, um, for the Asian owned businesses that are, you know, gathered on Olive Boulevard, which is really yes. our Chinatown in St. Louis, mm-hmm. that street creates more tax revenue than Del Mar, mm-hmm. then really the rest of University City combined. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's a story to tell. Yes. It is, honestly. Yes. And nobody seems to want to really talk about it because mm-hmm. it's a point where, you know, why does Olive Boulevard look the way that it does mm-hmm. while Del Mar looks the way that it mm-hmm. does? Because those are, you know, tax dollars yes. going into the street renovations and et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think in the next few years, there's going to be a lot of change mm-hmm. um, within University City and within St. Louis um, mm-hmm. to kind of tell the stories. It's already begun through Betsy, through the Mosaic Project, and other chambers, etc., that tell the story of immigrant entrepreneurs. But it's 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 almost like a golden time for mm-hmm. St. Louis to really come to terms with its past, mm-hmm. its current, and where it's going to go in the future. And it sounds like you're part of that driving force there, Julia, that you're going to be behind that, uh, pushing that forward. I can hear that. <laughs> Well, you know, it's always been a passion for me to, Mm -hmm. one, kind of level the playing field a bit Mm -hmm. and really help people with vision Mm -hmm. achieve that vision. And that's kind of where Create Space Generator Mm -hmm. and, you know, Betsy and Mosaic Project kind of play into everything that is going further in the future. So with Create Space Generator, um, our whole vision and mission is to give creative and food product and product. So physical product and food product. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it's things you'll find on the shelf exactly. as well as things you'd be served in a restaurant. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We want to give those entrepreneurs a chance to give the whole spectrum of business training that a, another like a, a tech startup would. Mm-hmm. So that, is it only for immigrant that entrepreneurs? Was my next oh, question. Are, we share a brain. We do. It's a lovely brain. <laughs> <laughs> a little scary. So it is not just for immigrant entrepreneurs. No, no, no. no. That is uh, that's a phenomenal because um, we've heard, you know, St. Louis, uh, the next biggest cluster that people are looking at is this whole foods cluster, mm-hmm. and a lot of individuals, as we've talked about, their first venture. Uh, entrepreneurial venture might be a food focused like yes. business. We're seeing that a lot in our Square One program, yes. and I can't imagine that it won't continue. So, actually, I wanted to talk about Carrie real quick. She's one of the incubators of, of our. So, this is our first year, and we're at month seven. And the, she is a single mom. She is African American, and so her brand is Vegan Cupcakes, and she just got picked up by Whole Foods. Really? Ooh. And there's our next. That's stop. a big move. Yes, <laughs> that's a big move. That's and you know, wonderful. we always. We also talk about the fact that, you know, when you get picked up by a Whole Foods, yes. part of it is just being able to deliver. Mm-hmm. You know, we always mm-hmm. sweat the, can I make the sale? But then you actually have to be able to deliver. So mm-hmm. having a place like Create Space means that you'll have some of that infrastructure, some of that mentoring, some of
some of that support so that mm-hmm. when you get that golden opportunity, you really can make the most out of it. So that's mm-hmm. very exciting. Mm-hmm. And Betsy, you said you had actually supported some of the the folks who are building their ventures there. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yes. One of the uh, funders and supporters of Mosaic has been uh, Civic Progress with mm-hmm. business mm-hmm. CEOs. And mm-hmm. as part of their financial support, it allowed us to give some partial scholarships to three entrepreneurs who were then um, investing their time and money into her training program. That's, That's really right. So when you say investing their time and money in the training program, were they participants in the program? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, be, I wanted to make sure I wasn't confusing them with Yeah, mentors no, they were participants. Or, mm-hmm. And do you know, happen to know what kind of businesses they were building? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously food related, but um, just well, one of what, them was what yummy stuff is curry, curry, right. <laughs> curry puffs. Oh, I've, I have had curry puffs. Sampit Those has amazing. wonderful curry puffs. Oh, and we actually had her bring some to one of our Mosaic Ambassador meetings and we bought her curry puffs and served them. So oh. we could also think of her uh, for our, our office meetings and our Delicious. parties and all of those That's kinds of things. That's why our awareness uh, opportunities that we host. So that would be great. Yes. What other kind of food entrepreneurs are you guys supporting? Sure. Andreas and Claudia. Um, so they are the founders of Life Pack, which is um, they also received yep. an arch grant mm-hmm. and they're doing Colombian coffee mm-hmm. and like Columbia, they're starting to do like more like Colombia paste, Colombian pastries as mm-hmm. well. But they're doing phenomenal and they're you know, I would say like Everyone is amazing to work with, mm-hmm. but especially immigrant entrepreneurs, they have a level of discipline mm-hmm. and a level of drive that mm-hmm. is all their background and experience. They kind of weave that into their food right. and it, it's it's so authentic that mm-hmm. it's you know, people are excited by their stories. Yeah. Sure. So and who's helping you over there? Are you doing all them? I know you, you have, your hand is in so many pots. <laughs> How do you do that? Right. <laughs> so we are a partnership with the city of university city. So Wonderful. what we do really is it's, um, folks can only stay in our space for one year. Okay. So we are in the Del Mar loop. We have a physical location. So that means people who participating in our program get to make sales immediately. That's so they're great. seeing revenues. Cash is king. Yep. Yes. Revenues are revenues are blood. Yep. So who are you using as your mentors? So our the way that we work is it's 12 months. Every month is a different module. So we start out with you know, basics like getting your LLC, being mm-hmm. legal, right. retail sales tax ID, right. accounting, all that fun mm-hmm. stuff. Our partners are the VLAA, which is the Volunteer Lawyers and Accountants Association. Great, you're right. They, mm-hmm. Sue Greenberg's amazing, mm-hmm. but that means we are partnered with Polsonelli, Ruben Brown, right. all the organizations that they're partnered with. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the first step is to get everybody legal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we do the business licenses with the city mm-hmm. and get our retail sales tax ID together. Mm-hmm. And then we partner with different organizations in the community we just um, we just created a partnership with Tech Shop so Excellent. we'll be doing some yes. classes over there yes. and we created a partnership with Balsa um, mm-hmm. which is another, another one of our favorite yes. friends yes yes, <laughs> yes. and then um, you know so really what we have how our classes work is that we bring in leaders from the community to teach them mm-hmm. and we never try to like reinvent the wheel that's a that's the smartest um, strategy and that's that's why I think what why uh, Christy and I work very, very well together and very closely together because we're not trying to duplicate resources and being able to pull those different resources from the community to help serve different areas of our community is absolutely uh, brilliant. And so. that also hits on another theme for us. We mm-hmm. often talk about the, the need for people not to only think about their entrepreneurial aspirations, but some people will never be entrepreneurs, but they can Mm -hmm. be mentors. They can Mm -hmm. be subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. There's lots of ways in. This is one of those messages our listeners hear from us all All the the time, time, but because it can't be overstated (laughs) there. And and I would imagine even for very experienced immigrant entrepreneurs, they're also probably not thinking of themselves as an expert. Mm -hmm. They're humble in doing their business. They're probably very humble in evaluating the many, many skills that they bring to the table. So this, mm-hmm. this would be an opportunity then for them to also give back to the community mm-hmm. with the thing they know the very best, which is doing it from scratch. Right. Absolutely. See, what we find is the reason why we have about 20 folks in our program at a time is they're not just learning from whoever we're bringing in. They're learning from each other. Oh, yes. yes. Peer learning. Mm-hmm. And when you have all types of different backgrounds, socioeconomic mm-hmm. skills, mm-hmm. empathy levels, just... Mm-hmm. just really develop and that's the type of magic that you can't really reproduce you know just 
on its own. Right. I totally agree. Yes. It's also why when people say, can't you do some of this remotely? I say, you know what? <laughs> Technically, we can deliver content remotely. Right. But we can't deliver the experience of being with your peers. Right. Of having that tribe. Of connecting with those subject matter experts. Mm-hmm. And build that empathy piece, we need it for our customers. Right. Mm-hmm. What better way to build it than to build it right with our peers? With each other. Right. That's exactly. That's fantastic. So tell me, Julia, how are you balancing, you know, your life, your family business, and now this newest venture? And then these opportunities, which we are so thrilled you said yes to. But wow, (laughs) we put another thing on your plate. So, you know, it all goes back to, I suppose, uh, three, about three years ago when I came back and I said I would do yoga. (laughs) (laughs) Yoga, folks. Yoga. Well, (laughs) but in reality, it's, it's about... You know, I've done a lot of thinking in the past three to six months when Mm -hmm. a lot of things started to kind of kind of rain down on me Mm because the reality of what's happening in our country and what's Mm -hmm. happening with this election and all this all this jazz Mm -hmm. is that it's caused some haywire things to kind of pop out Mm -hmm. (laughs) things that I haven't experienced since, Mm -hmm. you know, middle school, I would say, like, you know, kind of more blatant racism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I've realized is that. While I can't control mm-hmm. that, other people, other right. people, mm-hmm. what I can control is what's in my heart, mm-hmm. what's in what's what's in my realm within right. my bubble, and who I want to be. Right. So part of that is getting real organized, <laughs> <laughs> and two, like respecting my personal time and boundaries, and and powerfully saying yes and powerfully mm-hmm. saying no. Awesome. That's and, a great. That's a great point because a lot of times. Especially we as women don't know how to say no, mm-hmm. or we're afraid to say no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And being that for other, honestly, for other women too, because mm-hmm. like you said, women are very nurturing. Mm-hmm. We we just want to help others. It's, right. it's the it's <laughs> it's I, I guess it's the mother in us all. Yes. <laughs> right. So I guess like for for me, how I've been able to really because I I did have a moment where I I was just laying in the grass and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> What am I doing? I can't come take me away. <laughs> that, that minus the grass laying. Yes. It's like what am I doing? I, I, I remember yeah, exactly I can't see you laying in the grass, Cheryl. But <laughs> metaphorically speaking, right? I was in Art Hill, staring at the sky, like what am I doing? Yeah. And I realized that you know I can be for myself what mm-hmm. I want to be for myself, mm-hmm. and as as. As long as I can express that powerfully to others around me, I know that I will create a barrier of respect mm-hmm. and that it's it's not a big deal. Right. Wow, that's really very powerful and I appreciate you sharing that with us. Part of our goal is to to be real and mm-hmm. to talk about the very real hurdles that all of us face. Um, and, and and knowing that our country has changed and that there are some behaviors we're seeing now that are going to really challenge us mm-hmm. to be our best selves, right. um, but also to double down on those things we know we hold true and important. And, and one of those is building our community through the talent um, of our entrepreneurs who come to us from other countries. So and inclusivity. Inclusivity. I mean, I mean there's plenty the of space time. for yes. everybody. And in fact, you know, based on the recent reports in our community, now more than ever, we mm-hmm. need our immigrant community mm-hmm. to help grow the region because without mm-hmm. them, we stagnate. Right. And, you know, folks may not want to hear that. Folks may not think that's true. But the numbers... You know, Julie reminded mm-hmm. us the proof's mm-hmm. in the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the numbers tell us that's true. Well, when we talk about innovation, we've always said that you can't have a homogeneous population when you're talking about creating innovation. You can't get new ideas you that need, way. Exactly. You need everyone to contribute to our thriving, uh, innovative community because when we leave out people or we don't include folks, we're hurting ourselves. Oh. We're hurting innovation. We're hurting how we can grow as a country, as a as a region. One of the questions I have, and this is just very, just very interesting, because you are managing a huge operation with um, your family's business. How are you managing your family? <laughs> how does that work? Where I actually love how I love the fact that you brought up that question. Um, it's been a ride, and um, so you know, my grandpa is actually in the hospital right now. Oh He's my. been there at this point for almost four weeks. Oh he boy. went from you know uh, ICU to TCU mm. to rehab, and then back in the ER. Wow! So you know. He, He's he's 81 years old. Mm-hmm. It was a, neuro, a minor neurosurgery, but mm-hmm. that it just had lots of complications. Right. So you know, for my family, I've watched them work 
ridiculously hard Mm -hmm. like you know not the normal caliber of nine to five it it was it was more like nine to three Mm -hmm. (laughs) a.m and something happened in the past month after my grandpa went into emergency room that my mother dropped everything Mm. everything for the first time oh my i've never seen it Mm -hmm. ever Mm -hmm. wow and you know, actually, our rest, our two new restaurants are supposed, our fast casuals, Olive yes. and Rock Hill, are supposed to be open yesterday. <laughs> They're supposed to be open, right? Like, both of them, right? But other things took priority. And you know what? They are not open, and my mom does not care. That's right. <laughs> and I am, you know, that was the moment where I realized that none of it matters. Mm-hmm. Family is first, mm-hmm. and it's great that we're thriving, mm-hmm. but family first, and it's also the reason why I came back. Mm-hmm. And you know. I was I was getting a little scared, actually, mm-hmm. honestly, that like my mom would never retire and that it would mm-hmm. be this like wheel forever. Mm-hmm. Um, however, now I realize that my mom and I are similar. Mm-hmm. Like we <laughs> just want to take care of everyone, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, like our family is what is number Absolutely. one. Absolutely, people above profits exactly. always, and family above profits because. That's the most important. That's why you're doing this. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you're leaving this legacy for future family members or growing your own, you know, opportunity within your family. I mean, that's the that's I would think the the major reason why you do what you do. Exactly. Like again, back to why I even came back here. It's retire my mom mm-hmm. and figure it out for what it means for the Lulu's mm-hmm. empire or legacy or whatever we're creating I like here. Empire. Yes. <laughs> um, um, it's been like hasn't been a walk in the park because nope. we 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 do things very very differently. Well, I was going to say, especially if someone as young as yourself managing your parents and others in your family, I know that's got to be very uh, a very interesting dynamic. It's a Jedi mind trick, so. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Study uh, yoga and Jedi mind tricks. It's especially for my dad. Like you know, when I make decisions and do things, I always have to make sure he thinks that it's his decision. And we have all sorts of those people in our lives, right? Some of them on our board, some of them in our management team. I understand. I have a father like that. Yeah. And as long as he's like, "Yes, what a great idea coming out from his mouth," then I am a okay. There you go. Good for you. There you go. Well, Betsy, you have must have met so many people. People like Julia mm-hmm. who are inspiring, who take it to the next level, and who really contribute so much to our community. If more people want to get connected to the work you're doing with the mm-hmm. St. Louis Mosaic Project, how do they raise their hand? Uh, they go to our website at stlmosaicproject.org under Get Connected. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And they can join in. And I think really every day they can bring appreciation when they meet and see foreign born people in our community mm-hmm. to smile to patronize their businesses mm-hmm. to thank them yes and i think today more than ever as people face potential negative feedback mm-hmm. yes. um, or the fear of negative feedback from some people it's really incumbent upon the rest of us to go out of our way to yes. be more appreciative and be more welcoming and to understand that our whole community benefits Absolutely. when we have growth for all of us and mm-hmm. It's just it's not just the employment that's important, Mm -hmm. but it's also the fabric of our society in St. Louis to be um, multicultural so that all of our ethnicities can rise together, uh, not one at the exclusion of the other, but that we're open to all of our groups and that those people who feel that more than ever today take that extra step. Well, I want you know, it's very interesting that you say this because we're going all of us are still, I think, um, Uh, wrapping our brains around you know the whole process the election process in our in our country and it's just i i would love for people to understand that this country was founded by immigrants you know it it, you know there were native people that were here yes already but when we founded the united states of america it was founded through people coming here from other countries. And I would love for people to, to still have that, that you know, y- y- your forefathers were here and were greeted and were welcomed by Native people here. Have the same respect, have the same openness and willingness to embrace people that are different because uh, that's what this, this America is about. It's a fabric of, of different and tapestry of different people, different ethnicities, different cultures. And we should embrace that. We shouldn't try to separate that. Yeah. So if you are uh, happen to be an immigrant or an immigrant 
entrepreneur or love those who are, um, Betsy, Betsy wants you to give her a call yes. uh, because the, the stronger, the bigger that uh, this movement is, mm-hmm. the more likely we are to really take advantage of what Julia has characterized as this golden period where mm-hmm. uh, we can really grow and change and see uh, the transformation of our communities thanks to those investments of everyone. Mm-hmm. And risk takers. And risk yes. takers, no doubt. Absolutely. None of this comes easy, um, and none of it comes without risk. So mm-hmm. the more we can support each other and create that network, that fabric of our community that um, really does allow for all of our strengths to mm-hmm. add to the the really the rich tapestry of who we are, mm-hmm. uh, that's when we're... We're very fortunate to be living here in St. Louis. So we know where to find a Betsy, Julia. Um, where would we find? I, uh, I'm sure I can Google Lulu's. <laughs> Google Lulu's. Um, but where else can we find you and where can the entrepreneurs find Create Space? Sure. With Create Space, you can find us on the Delmar Loop. So we have a physical store at 6325 Delmar Boulevard. It's right across from the Tivoli. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you'll be able to see there's 20 yeah. different makers in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of the maker movement. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> if, you know, folks are interested in applying for our next cohort uh, because every six months we do accept new folks. Mm -hmm. It's uh, www.createspacestl.com and as for Lulu's, I mean, Lulu Seafood, um, (laughs) if you're hungry, Olive, Rock Hill, exactly. Deerbergs. I can't wait to the Rock Deerbergs. Hill. Deerbergs. Yeah. Can't get more convenient, folks. So thank you both for joining us. Yes. It's been truly an honor and a pleasure to spend time with you to learn more about what you're doing and, and in a very small way to be a part of it. Yes. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more about your good work yes. and your exciting activities. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Changing the way you view new ventures, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship, it's Entrepreneurially Thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections and be sure to leave us a five-star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneuriallythinking.com. Hashtag EthinkSTL. Entrepreneurially Thinking is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.